Come on, if you know you need the Lord, just lift your hands to heaven right now. God, here we are. We need you. Lord, our family needs you. There's people that we love so much, they need you. God, our marriages need you. Our kids need you. Our bodies and our health, we need you, God. God, without you, we can't do it. We fall short. We make mistakes. We find ourselves in traps that we set for ourselves. So God, we need you. So tonight, I ask you, Holy Spirit, to speak clearly to each of our hearts because we need you. We need your leading. We need your guiding. We need your word. We need your power. We need your authority. We need all that you have. We need every chain to be broken off of our lives and our families in the name of Jesus. God, we need wisdom on what to do when we don't know where to go. God, we need favor and doors to open in people's lives. God, in their finances and in their homes, in the name of Jesus. God, we need you. So tonight, Father, I pray that every person here would recognize how much they need you. Let us see it. Let us feel it. Let us know it tonight that we can't do this without you. We love you, God, and we thank you. If you know you need Jesus, give him some praise tonight. If you know you need his power, if you know you can't do it without him, give him a shout of praise like he deserves it. Give him some praise like he's worthy. Come on, we can't do this without the power of the Holy Spirit. Let him know, God, we need you. Come on, how many are thankful to be in the house of God tonight? How many are so glad? How many are so glad that when we need God, He is right there for us? How many are just thankful for that? Church, He is not far from you. He isn't distant from you. He doesn't require you to jump through some hoops to encounter his love, he loves you. And here's some proof that God loves you so much that he doesn't require you to do anything else. He loves you this much, he gave his son for you. What will he withhold from you if he gave his precious, precious son to you? He loves you this much. How many believe that tonight? It's a plan for your life. Tonight's going to be a great night. I'm super excited. I'm pumped. Who's ready for the word tonight? All right. Well, let's get ready. Give your neighbor a high five. You can take your seat. Tell them I'm so glad to see you tonight. And hello, everybody online. We're so glad that you're tuning in right now. I believe God has a word for you in Jesus' name. Tonight we begin a brand new series called The Holy Ghost. You know, in the month of October, I'm already seeing as I drive through the city, um, skeletons and ghosts and demons and everywhere I go. And it's getting earlier and earlier now. I used to see it in October. I've seen houses decorated since August. Since August, we are not even in October yet. We haven't even got, we're still, it's still summertime and I'm seeing it. But in a season and a time where the world is glorifying scary horror films and horror theme parks and demons and it's a time, it's an opportunity for the world to, for the, the, for the enemy to sneakily sneak into homes and sneak into families in ways that when we let our guard down, we let him in we let him dictate our lives. 
and we open our minds to this spiritual, to this evil realm. But I believe that in this month, there is one spirit that has power and reigns over all, who has authority to conquer and defeat death who not only has a, the authority to have rule in your life, but the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, I believe that lives in you, and that's the Holy Ghost we're gonna be talking about. Not no ghosts and goblins we're gonna decorate our house with. We're gonna lift up and honor and glorify the Holy Ghost, the one who reigns supreme in Jesus' name. How many are thankful for the Holy Spirit? So all month long, every service, Wednesdays and Sundays, I don't want you to miss because every service is another puzzle piece on, on learning and understanding and coming to know the Holy Spirit. How many are saying, I wanna know the Holy Spirit more and more? I do, I know I do. But there is a problem. And one of the biggest problems we have today in the modern church is this. We have become so in love with programs, procedures, with, with all of these things, that we have escorted the Holy Spirit out of our services. We've fallen so in love with practices, religious duties, performance, doing things that we think honors God, but the reality is deep in our heart, we're living inside, we feel rotten, we feel empty, and we feel broken. And I believe that tonight, we're gonna conquer and we're gonna overcome this demonic lie against you that says, come on, that says that you can't do it, that you can't amount, that God doesn't love you. I believe that's a lie and God has a plan and purpose for you tonight in Jesus' name. We're gonna learn tonight how to overcome this battle and this war that all of us are in. We're in a war right now. Someone say, we're in a war. And tonight, the title of this message is The War Within. Someone say, The War Within. Did you know that right now, every moment of your life, as a matter of fact, you are experiencing, you are in the middle of a battlefield, and that war is happening inside of you. There's a war, and there's two enemies. There's two, there's two opposing parties. There's, a, there's one party that opposes God, and then there's one side that loves God. And this war is happening right now between the flesh and the spirit. What is the flesh? The flesh is our body, our desires, our wants, our, um, we can probably sum it down to what we see, taste, smell, uh, and the other two senses. I'm blanking on them here and the other one feel hallelujah you guys are scholars the flesh desires things that we see we can feel and we can touch and we can smell and the flesh wants these things and the flesh desires these things which is a lot of time why we feel like we can't please or honor God because we're allowing our flesh to lead and dictate our lives and we let what we see lead our lives we let what we feel lead our lives we let what we smell and what we can taste and what we hear lead our lives and as long as you're allowing the flesh to lead your life you cannot hear or, or please God's voice. How many know that that's to be true? So tonight we're going to learn how to overcome and to win this battle, this war that's happening within us. But there's another side. It's a spirit. And the spirit, the spirit of God, as the spirit lives within us, God has given us a spirit. And this spirit desires to please God. Desires to know God desires to do things that honor his name. The Spirit of God desires to be close and intimate with the Lord. The, the Spirit of God desires good things. The Spirit, the, you know, want to know this? The Holy Ghost actually wants to be involved in everything in your life. The Holy Ghost is no foreigner to you. The Holy Ghost doesn't, doesn't have to try and get to know you. The Holy Ghost knows you better than you know yourself. And sometimes we think that God doesn't relate to us, or God doesn't get me, or God doesn't understand me. He doesn't fit with my schedule, or he doesn't fit with my vibe, or he doesn't fit with my kind of people. I just can't really squeeze God into the mix. Maybe on Sundays, maybe on Wednesdays, but in my life, I can't really squeeze him in. 
But the Holy Spirit desires so much to be engaged, to be involved, to be invested, to guide, and to lead every step of your life. Without the guidance, without the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we cannot please the Lord. So tonight, we're going to overcome this war. We're going to win this war. Someone said we're going to win this war. So what we need to do, we have to choose what side is going to lead us. We have to choose what voice we're going to listen to. We have to decide what desire we are going to fall, up, fall under. We have to literally decide who is going to take the steering wheel of our lives. I want us to turn to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to read verses 16 and 17. It says, so I say, let, I'm going to pause there, let, what a powerful three-letter word, let. Let's talk about that word, let. That word let literally means to walk with, to live by, to progress, or to conduct oneself. So when the scripture says, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, the scripture is literally saying this, walk with, live by, conduct yourself, and it says to progress forward with the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit do that in your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do what? Evil. The sinful nature wants to do what? Evil. Which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions the spirit and the flesh they're in a constant battle for the steering wheel of your life it's always going to come down to who you decide is going to have control of the steering wheel of your life we are not victim we are not victim to some kind of outside force that dictates how we're going to live it's up to us to decide what desires are going to spring forth? And who are we going to live for? I, either I'm going to allow my flesh to lead me into sin and death, or I'm going to allow the Spirit of God to lead me into what pleases Him, or allow the Spirit of God to lead me into my purpose, or allow the Spirit of God to lead me into the will of God for my life and for my family. And until I let the Holy Spirit lead and guide me, I will never come to know the good things that God has for me in my future. Some of us are so stuck right now. You feel stuck and you feel bound. You feel like your feet are in some cement. And it might be because your flesh has been guiding you and leading you and fighting with the spirit within you and you have not allowed the spirit of God to lead or dictate your life. But I got, a good, I got good news for you, friend. It's this. The spirit of God has a way out. The spirit of God has a plan for you. The spirit of God has a purpose for your life. And all he's saying is if you would just follow my lead, if you you will just let me guide you if you will let me lead you if you will walk with me and talk with me and if you will conduct your life based on what I say for you I got blessings and good things in store for you if you would just let me guide you we gotta let somebody say let we, it's almost like we got to give permission we have to walk with you know what's interesting about this word? It's a Greek phrase, this let guide. Let guide is this Greek phrase, is peripatio. Peripatio, which means, again, like I said, to walk with. But that also, in another way, means to move according to the guiding of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say that again. This phrase means this, to move. Somebody say move. To move according to the guiding or the leading of the Holy Spirit. This is an action word. This is not a dormant word. This word involves action. Someone say action. This word involves movement. It involves walking. 
It involves progressing. It involves moving forward. I have to walk with the Holy Spirit if I want him to guide me. In other words, if you want the Holy Spirit to guide you, you got to get moving. If you truly desire to walk according to the will that God has for you, you need to stand up and start moving those two feet. Some of us think that we're waiting upon the Lord. I'm just waiting on God. And God's like, I'll be right there. <sighs> no, that's not God. God's not in heaven like, I'm sorry, I know I'm running late, but I'll be there, son, daughter. I'm just trying to pack the stuff and I got a schedule and I have some calls and some prayers to answer, but I'll get to you. Just wait for me. Okay, God, I'll wait right here. Doing nothing, moving nowhere, not walking, not progressing forward, not living a life that pleases you. I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting. What are we waiting for? You waiting for the stars to line up? You waiting for the clouds to clear? Or waiting for your horoscope to kind of say what it's supposed to say? Like, I needed that horoscope confirmation. It was so crazy, my horoscope and my fortune cookie all kind of lined up and it was just, I was waiting for that. Some of us crack open fortune cookies, so eager to get a word from God and God is saying, you know how much word I got for you right here in scripture? I've been trying to speak to you every single day. You crack that fortune cookie open, trying to see me, all you get is nothing. But I got life for you in my word. I got power for you in my scripture. If you would just open this book up, I got everything you need. Just let me lead you and guide you. Let me tell you where to go. I got the plan, I got the steps, I got the way, I have your vision, just let me guide you. Some of you had Chinese food today. And you were like, ooh, look at mine. What does yours say? I know, I do the same thing. I read the thing. The only way, I'll say this. You cannot steer a parked car. There is no driving, giving direction to a car that's still in the garage. Your GPS, you're in the garage. And you're like, what do I do next? GPS is like, move. Open the garage, turn it on. Put some gas in the car, maybe. Put some air in your tires, I don't know, change the oil. But we gotta go. We gotta move, somebody say move. And some of us are praying and we're asking God, God lead me, guide me, direct me. And God's saying, you're not moving, how can I? He can't do it. We're trying, to, we're trying to see if God can come in and rescue us in a time where we reject the instruction of God, we reject the voice of God. God tells us, I want you to do this, and we don't listen, and we wonder why you can't hear the voice of God. And God is saying, I've, been, I've spoken to you already. I've given you instruction. You know what you need to do. And we're saying, God, I, I, don't, I don't hear the voice of God. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. And God says, you know exactly what to do. It's time for you to finally repent of your sins and turn back to me. It's time for you to finally forgive your mom who you who felt like abandoned you. It's time for you to finally surrender your offense that you've been holding on to. It's time for you to finally jump into holy warriors. You've been hearing about it all the time. And you're wondering what all these crazy holy warriors are screaming about in service. And it's time God is saying, take the step, son. Take the step, daughter. I got a plan for your life. If you will let me guide you, then you will find it. But you got to move. We got to move. Hallelujah. Someone give God praise and my iPad just died right now. I don't even need this. iPad is dead, but the word of God is alive tonight. iPad's dead, but I don't need my iPad. I got this Bible right up here. 
If we're going to hear a voice, if we're going to hear the word from God tonight, the Holy Spirit's going to speak up and he's going to speak to you tonight. I believe the Holy Spirit has been saying all day to me, I got a word that I'm going to preach when you get up there. Stop trying to depend on your program. Stop trying to depend on your systems. Stop trying to depend on your format. Stop trying to depend on your performance. Let go of those things. I got a plan for you. If you would just let me guide you, if you would listen to my voice, I got something for you. Just listen to me and get moving get moving someone said we gotta move we get frustrated with God we get frustrated with God we think God is running late we think God don't got time for you you think God has forgotten about you man all this while the Holy Spirit is hovering and God is looking for anybody that will worship him in spirit and in truth. He's looking for somebody that will cry out to him in spirit, not in their flesh. We got, man, um, let's go. Let's go. Okay, the Holy Spirit is still there. We got too many carnal Christians up in our lives. I mean... We got too many carnal Christians. And this is what I mean by that. This is what a carnal Christian looks like. We do things that honor God outwardly. But inside, we're aware that we're toxic and it's rotten. We're aware of it. And we know it and we feel it. And listen, I'm not telling you this message because I'm not trying to put your laundry out there. God is. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but here's the reality. I want you guys to get this. We, we, need, we need to hear this kind of stuff. The only times that I really fall flat on my face in repentance is when God calls out my junk and he calls out my mess. And until we finally, we finally are open to hearing some truth, some would say truth, we will not be free. And God is saying tonight, I'm trying to set some captives free. I'm trying to break some chains that have been holding you back and holding you down. The Holy Spirit has desired more than ever to lead you and to guide you and to send his son down to show you how much he loves you. Come on, somebody. Look at Jack over here with the charger. Come on, juicy me up. Let's do this. I'm going to open the Bible. How about that? Whoa, he got a... Come on, Jack. Turn with me. Turn with me to 1 Samuel 16. It says this. Now the Lord said to Samuel, You have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him as king of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Okay. Find a man named Jesse who lives there, for I have selected one of his sons to be my king. Now, this is crazy because God knew which son it was. God knew that he was going to anoint David as king, but he did not tell that to the prophet Samuel. He could have, but he didn't. The only way that Samuel would come to know who the right king was, he had to move. He did not get the instruction in the beginning, but he got his next step. Some of us right now, we're begging God, we're crying out to God for all the steps to go forward. And God is saying, you have not honored the step I put in front of you. God is just, God is just saying this, will you just take the next step? Will you just do the next thing you're supposed to do? No, but God, I need to, 
Before I do that, I need to go and clean things up. I need to get my life right. Before I surrender my life to God, which is my next step, I, I need to kick my drug addiction. I need to kick my cigarette addiction. I need to, before I, before I surrender my life to God, I need to clean things up. I need to cut some people out of my life. Before I do anything, God is saying, I didn't say do any of that. I didn't say go there. I didn't say do that. As a matter of fact, I left that part of the instruction out because your next step is just this. Surrender your life to me. Give your heart to me. Give all you can to me. And I will show you then which path to take. We wonder why we're stuck. Let's keep reading. But Samuel asked, how can I do that? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. He says, take a heifer with you. The Lord replied, and say that you have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you which of his sons to anoint for me. So Samuel did as the Lord instructed. Samuel what? He did as the Lord instructed. That's our, that's our mission. This is our action step here. We must do as God instructs us. Come on. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town came trembling to meet him. What's wrong, they asked. Did you come in peace? Yes, he came. He said, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourselves. Come with me to the sacrifice. Then Samuel performed the purification right for Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice too. When they arrived... Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, mm, surely, surely this is the Lord's anointed. Look how swole this guy is. Now, <laughs> boys, I see you, Brent. Brent, could you come up here really quick? I'm calling you up. Could you just come up here real quick? I need you as a sermon illustration. That's my boy, Brent. <laughs> Prophet Samuel looked around and said, that boy's swole. Just jump up here. I don't know if he can or just run up or, okay, he's going to take the stairs. He's too big to, to be doing all that. He needs stairs. <laughs> Prophet Samuel looks at all the sons, looks at the first one, Eliab. What's up? How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. Love you. I love you too. Thank you for bringing me up here. So he looks at him. He goes, yep, about six Four, six, five, how tall are you? Six, two. Oh, he's like, that's the guy. That's the guy. That's the one. Is this real? Yeah. Real beard? Yeah. He could grow a beard. That's the dude. That's the guy right there for sure. How much can he bench? Uh, most is 405. He's key. That's the key. We got him. He's handshaking Jesse in the back. We got him. We got the king. Out, he's looking. What does the scripture say? He took one look. He took a look. The Bible says this. We walk by faith, not by. We walk by faith, not by. We walk in the spirit, not in the. Samuel, in that moment, I'm not going to say he was in his flesh, but in that moment, he let his eyes do the leading for him. He saw what he thought could be the plan of God. He allowed his senses, he allowed his flesh to lead him. This war, I'm telling you, is always gonna happen in your life. Your eyes are gonna wanna lead you. You're gonna wanna be led by your ears. You're gonna wanna be led by your feelings and your emotions. You're gonna wanna be led by what you desire, your flesh and your body desires. And what God is saying is no, 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 no. I want you to walk by faith, not by sight. So this is what happens. The Lord said to Samuel, verse 7, don't judge by his appearance or his height. For I have rejected him. Not you, Eliab. <laughs> For I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see the see things the way you see them. Wow. We need to pray for the vision of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need more than ever before to see what God sees. 
about yourself, about your kids, about your marriage, about your families, about your workplace, about your mission in life, about your purpose, about your friends that you decide to be around, about the decisions you make. We need more than ever the vision of the Holy Spirit. We have to pray and say, God, I want to see what you see. I want to go where you go. I want your vision, God. I want to walk by faith, not by sight. Not by sight. He says, people judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And this is what we talked about earlier, is that we've fallen in love with the performance of what it looks like to be a Christian, and we've escorted the Holy Spirit out of our lives. And in doing so, we dishonor God. We don't honor him. The Bible says we honor God with our lips, but our hearts are far from him. In other words, I say to God, I love you, but I live in a different way. I tell God I believe in him, but I don't, tr I don't tremble or reverence his presence. I say to God things like, oh God, I worship you and I praise you, but in reality, we've rejected the voice of God because we reject his instruction and we reject the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is waiting and looking and searching for somebody in here that's saying, I'm tired, I admit I've sinned, I admit I've rejected God. I admit that I've fallen short and I want to come clean and throw my life in the loving arms of God because I need the Holy Spirit in my life. Is there anybody in here tonight that's saying I need the Holy Spirit? I need your guidance. I need your vision. I need your word. I need your power in my life. Come on, if that's you, give them some praise tonight. So he goes to his next step. Then Jesus told his son, Abinadab, don't name your son that. If your name Abinadab in here, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesse told his son, Abinadab, to step forward and walk in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, that's not the one the Lord has chosen. That ain't him either. Then Jesse summoned Shimea. But Samuel said, that's not him. In the same way, seven, sons, seven, seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked, are, all of the, are these all of the sons you have? He says, oh. No, I got one more. I mean, yeah, 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 I forgot. I forgot. I got one more. That's messed up. That is messed up. Prophet Samuel comes, you bring all your sons, and then you, for, like, forget. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's the other one. He's out there. Jacked up. <laughs> so he does, so he says this. So he says, there is still the youngest, Jesse replied. But he's out in the fields watching the sheep and goats. Now look at David. On assignment. In motion. Walking leading, living, conducting himself. Some of us think that we have to wait around in the house for a prophet to come and speak to you and say, you're the one, you're the one God has chosen. You're like, yes, my horoscope and fortune cookie all predicted this, it's my time. But God is saying, I don't need you to wait around for me and try and call you out of a crowd. I've already called you, I've already chosen you and I've given you my instruction. If you would just get on your two feet and do what I've called you to do. If you would just surrender your life to me and your will to me and your way to me, then I promise you I got a future for you that's great and grand. I will anoint you to be king, I will anoint you to do great things. I will anoint you to conquer and to kill the enemy in your life and in your family. Come on. Is there anybody that's saying, I want the anointing of God on my life tonight? Let's give Eliab a hand. Thank you, Eliab. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. Any dark, handsome guys in here with beautiful eyes? <laughs> hey, I didn't even finish the question. He was like, that's me. 
That's me, bro. Dark and handsome. I'm your guy. I'll make my way up there now because I know you're going to see me and call me anyways. <laughs> you, you are, man. You are. You're, you, yeah. You're not as dark as probably David, but you're a handsome guy. Hallelujah. <laughs> so he said, the Lord said, this is the one. Anoint him. This is the one. Anoint him. Samuel moved as soon as the Spirit of God, as soon as the voice of God said move. David was in motion, working, doing what God has called him to do. Allowing, letting the Spirit guide his life. He was walking with the Spirit. He was progressing. He was conducting himself. He was accompanied by the Spirit in everything he did. He was not sitting idly trying to wait for God to, to open the heavens and clear the stars and do all these things. He said, I'm done trying to wait for some fairy tale thing out there. I heard the voice. It's time for him to respond tonight. I got one more scripture to share with you. And it's, thank God for the little charger because it's in my iPad. It says this. It's in Psalms. Psalms 51, verse 16 through 19. God said, worship team can come out. It says, you do not desire a sacrifice or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O oh God. Look with favor on Zion and help her. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Verse 19. Then you will be pleased with the sacrifices offered in the right spirit. If God wanted your performance, he would not have given you the spirit. If God wanted you just to perform for him, to check in, to do your hours, he wouldn't have given you the power of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, I believe God wants to anoint somebody in here. Not somebody who's got it all together. Not somebody who is as big as Eliab. Not somebody that the world would look at and say, that's the one. But somebody that has this kind of heart that this scripture says, I'm not trying to perform anymore. I'm not trying to just do this just because. But I'm ready to offer God my broken spirit and my repentant heart. I'm broken inside. The recipe tonight, the first step tonight for you, for those tonight that are saying, I want to let the Holy Spirit guide my life. The first step is and will always be this, to give your life to Jesus Christ. You cannot give your life to Jesus without the Spirit leading you. But it takes you taking motion and saying, I'm ready. I want to surrender. I'm ready to give it all. If this is you tonight, and you've, maybe you've been struggling with God. Maybe this war within you has been wearing you out. And like Paul, he says, I'm all too human. That's the problem. I'm all too human. I do things I don't want to do, and I don't do the things I, I, I want to do. He says, I'm all too human, so, so I, I, I just I can't even carry out my own good intentions. I can't even, I, I just, I end up doing stuff I don't want to do. I don't want to fall to that sin, but I keep falling to it. I want to give my life to God. I want to live for God. I want to speak out the way these people on screen are. I want to get baptized like, like, like this gentleman was tonight. I, I want to do all these great things and worship for God and do all this awesome stuff for the Lord, but I, I, I just don't do that. I want to, but I don't. The answer for you tonight 
His name is Jesus. Because Jesus made a way where there wasn't a way. Jesus went to the cross and paid for that. Jesus defeated sin and death so that you can be free. Jesus went to the cross, represented you and all of your sin, and said, I got you. I'm going to pay for all of it. Now, if you will put your faith in me, I will empower you. I will give you the gift of my Holy Spirit. I will anoint you. I will give you a new lifestyle. I will give you a new way to think. I will give you a new heart. I will give you a new hope. I will take your depression and give you joy. I will take your anxiety and give you peace. I will take your suicidal thoughts and give you joy in life again. I will take away your temper and your anger and give you love for other people. Whatever it is that you're holding on to, all I need from you is not performance. It's not flesh. It's not acts. I just need a broken and contrite heart. I need somebody to say, God, I surrender at your feet tonight. So at the count of three, if this is you and you're saying, I'm ready to surrender to God. I'm ready to give God my everything. I'm tired of this war that's going on inside of me and I'm ready to win this war and I'm ready to overcome. If that's you tonight, and you're ready to surrender your heart and your life to Jesus. When I count to three, I just want you to raise your hand up. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this place. All over this place. I see all your hands. I see all your hands. Those hands went up right away. I know that there's a couple more people. If you were like me, you're fighting yourself. Your flesh is fighting your spirit. You want to raise your hand, but people are watching you. It's time to say, I don't care what people think. I'm not concerned about the outward appearance. I just care about what God thinks about me now. I just care about how he sees me. Come on, there's somebody else in here who's fighting it. Raise your hand tonight. You're saying, that's me. That's me. That's me. I see you guys. That's me. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. God is proud of you. Tonight's your night. Tonight's your night of breakthrough and deliverance. You'll never be the same again tonight. Tonight is the night. That's what I want to happen. Before we leave, let's all stand up. And everybody that raised your hand, I want you to move. This is the motion I want you to take. I want you to let the Holy Spirit guide you. What we're going to do, I want you to make your way out of your seat. Come over to the side and come up here to the front with this prayer team. And let's take a motion today and let's decide today that our life is never going to be the same again. Come on, church. Let's get excited for everybody that's coming forward. This is a new beginning. Come on, church. This is where we celebrate lives being transformed forever. Yes. Sing, I need you. I need you. Tonight's your night. You'll never be the same. I'm proud of each, of one, each and every one of you. You made a decision to be up here. You said, God, I know that's me. I'm supposed to be up there, and you came. I'm proud of you. Good job. Proud of you. You made it. You made it, bro. Proud of you. Proud of you. Your lives will never be the same. Because the moment you get a taste of what it feels like to live in the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you'll never want to go back. 
tonight I believe that this is your first step in that. And as the Holy Spirit guided you up here, I believe he, continue, he will continue to guide you. We have a team that's gonna pray with you, but they're also gonna help you take your next step because God's gonna give you a next step. He's not just gonna call you up here and abandon you. He's gonna give you another step. The same way he gave it to Samuel. He did one thing and then God said, okay, now do this. The same way that you came up here, God's gonna give you your next step. The person in front of you, they're gonna pray with you. Not only that, they're gonna sign you up for your next step. It's this class called Starting at the Way. In, in other words, it's your next step. Someone say, my next step. And we're gonna follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit in this. We're gonna allow God to lead us. We're gonna show you how to walk with God, how to read your Bible. We're gonna help you get baptized. Your life's never gonna be the same. And I'm so excited about all, each and every one of you. Church, are we excited about those that are giving their life to Jesus tonight? So I'm gonna need some more leaders, just a few more leaders in this area, please. If we have DG leaders, um, any kind of, I mean, if you're a leader, I can see you. <laughs> Coming up, we need your help, we need your help. Thank you so much. Thank you, leaders. If you're a youth leader, a young adult leader, come up here. Thank you. Let's pray. Everyone bow your heads. Close your eyes. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, thank you. You went to the cross. And you suffered a horrible death. You were raised from the dead. to purchase my salvation. Forgive me, God. Forgive me for rejecting your voice. Forgive me for pushing you away. But after this night, my life is yours. So Holy Spirit, fill me now. There it goes. In the name of Jesus, fill your children, God. These are your children. He's filling now. He's beginning to touch them now. Just begin to receive the Spirit now. Receive His Spirit now. There it is. That's God touching you. Just begin to fix your thoughts on Him. He loves you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every soul here, God. Right now, you would touch them and mark them with your spirit. They will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you that by your blood, they are washed clean. They are made whole because of what you did on the cross, Jesus. And now, God, up here, you're pleased because they've given you their heart, Lord. Touch them, God. Fill them now in the name of Jesus. Begin to pour out your spirit upon them. Just begin to welcome him right now, wherever you're at. Just lift your hands if you're at this altar right now. And just begin to receive now the spirit of God. He's moving tonight. He's moving tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, touch your children, God. In the name of Jesus, fill her, God. Right now, God, with your fire. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's it. Let him fill you. Let him touch you. You'll never be the same. Set her free, God, in Jesus' name. Set her free in the name of Jesus. Every spirit now, go in Jesus' name. The power of God right now, he's moving. He's moving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pray from after. Okay. What is it? It's cancer? Okay. What's up, buddy? What's your name? Devon. Devon? We're going to pray for you tonight. I know the doctor said you have cancer. We're believing that dries up tonight and leaves this place in the name of Jesus. How old are you? Nine. Nine. You know that God loves you? Yes. You know he has a plan for your life? Yes. You believe because I believe that God tonight can heal you. Do you believe with me? Yes. Can we pray for Devon tonight? 
Stretch your hands. I know you can't see them out there, but just stretch your hands up here to the center. In the name of Jesus. Father, right now we activate our faith and we believe, God, that by your stripes we are healed. So in the name of Jesus, we come against cancer. Cancer, we speak to you now. We bind you now in the name of Jesus. You have to go. Every cancerous cell, every cancerous tumor, go and dry up now in the name of Jesus. Father, right now we pray a washing of your blood. Father, in the name of Jesus, your son, this is your son. And Father, we thank you, God, that by your stripes we are healed. We declare it. It is done in the name of Jesus. We don't walk by sight, God. We walk by faith, and we believe by faith, God, that he is healed. In the name of Jesus, we receive it now. In Jesus' name, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, let's give God praise for that. In the name of Jesus, it's done. It's done. It's done in Jesus' name. How many believe it's done? In the name of Jesus. Church, we love you. I, I don't need, I, it, it feels weird like me having to dismiss, but we love you so much. This is just the beginning. I believe God has other pieces in this where He has other pieces in this series, and let's not miss a service. God has a word for you. We love you so much. If you need prayer, come forward. We would love to pray with you. I'll be up here. We have a whole team that will be up here. We love you so much. We're going to be here Sunday to hear Jerry Flowers. He is the founder of Redefine TV, and he guest speaks at Mike Todd's church. He's a big name. He's awesome. He's going to be here in the house. We love you, church. God bless you. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night.